This is the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. This is a custom statue. His name is M. Bison. He's from Street Fighter. And you are naked. Didn't think I could tell, did you? As the Extreme Channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, welcome to the Extreme Channel. Very excited because I have a magnificent custom statue in front of me. This is M. Bison on Throne from Street Fighter 2. Now, as I said, this is a custom. It's a private unlicensed commission, and I always say that I can't tell you where I get these from. And he is a great example why. I actually had this piece, or a very similar piece to this, on order about three or four years ago. However, the person commissioning it, because it wasn't approved by whoever owns Capcom, sent them a cease and desist letter, so they had to stop making the project and refund everybody. But someone else took the reins, they went ahead and made a small run of these, and here he is in all of his glory, and I could not be happier as a spoiler for this review. So if you're unfamiliar, M. Bison, as I said, is from Street Fighter II and the 50 variations of games they've done from that. Whether it's Marvel vs. Capcom, Super Street Fighter II, Street Fighter II Turbo, and I could go on forever. And what they've done is they put him on a throne. He looks magnificent because he is the main villain or the main boss. I was always a huge Street Fighter fan. I would actually go back in the days we had arcades. and I have it on my main down here in my basement. I loved when we could play it on Super Nintendo. And generally, I was one of the top players. I didn't play competitively or anything like that, but it's been a long time since I've played regularly, and while I never was M. Bison, I was usually Ken, he was kind of my favorite player, I never thought he was that difficult to beat in the end. However, he is pretty badass. And what they've done with the concept of this statue is they've taken that badassery and multiplied it by 100 in this throne statue. So let's look at that and how it's captured. Now it's a throne, and some of this stuff on here, I'm too ignorant to know what it is. But you see a bottom base to the throne, then kind of this golden copper aspect, which we'll see on the back as well, because there's some absolutely amazing stuff. And then some coils coming out of it. And again, this might be from the game. Maybe I'm a little bit too ignorant. Maybe it's been too long since I remembered that. But these metallic coils or tubes coming out, and he is sitting there. His feet are resting upon them and you see him in his traditional outfit. Not only does he have his boot and shin guards, but the traditional red that was the normal version of him. Of course, there's different variant players. Where you see him right here, he actually has this fist holding up dog tags, which looks amazing, and there's some switch out options. You see his cloak draped over his right shoulder, and keep in mind, this is his cloak that he threw off right before he fights you, so I love that they added that, and he looks evil as hell. There's a bunch of different portrait options we're going to look at during display, but all of them show him sinister, show him as the dictator that he would be. This very high throne behind him with his symbol on the back looks absolutely fabulous. And what's awesome about the concept of this statue is we're not done even though we just looked at the front. Look at the back here. Also in that gold statuesque color, he has his three henchmen the other main villains of the series. You have Balrog on one side with Saget or Saget or however you wanted to pronounce it, who used to be the champion in the middle there, who's definitely a badass character. And of course, Vega. So I actually have some old PCS statues of, here's Balrog, this one right here, which I like decently. It's a pretty cheap piece, but it looks good. And then Vega looks a little bit better in my opinion. And I actually used to own this M. Bison right here. But if you're a follower channel, you know that I actually put that up for sale. But it's awesome how they have that. So I think it's an amazing concept. I love the skulls on the side. You really didn't get a good look at them. Bewildering paint and sculpt. There's some flames coming out of them. So I think the concept's a five out of five. This is amazing. This is the kind of character you want on a throne. He looks magnanimous. And they did so much extra stuff to the throne to make it look great. Now, one of the negatives with all that greatness is you don't really get to see it all. That's a bad thing with the design. However, there's some other amazing stuff with the design. So really quick, let's look at the unboxing and assembly of this heavy son of a bitch because it is very heavy. Very heavy, big box, kind of torn to shreds, but thankfully nothing was damaged. It did have a slide art box with the M. Bison symbol on the top. Now it was technically only in one layer, but look at the cutouts on the top here. They actually added some of the switch out options in that, I don't want to say first layer, but top. Then over here, you have the main layer, which housed M. Bison on throne, all one piece, and two of the arms.
measurements on him. So he is one four scale, meaning four times smaller than a real life version. It's about 18 inches wide. And the base is about 16 inches deep. His feet hang over a little bit more than that, as you can see. And the tallest part of the throne is just under 25 inches. Now, there's some switch out options for his portraits in his right hand. The first right hand here, he's holding the dog tags. And I believe these are Guile's dog tags. The other one, he's actually using his psycho power, that's what they call it, to produce a flame, which looks really cool. Five different portrait options, starting with this one. Mouth closed, a little bit of a grumpy face, has his hat on. Here he has a little bit of a smirk, almost a sneer. Here he just looks pissed, teeth gritted. Then you have one where a really maniacal smile, and I love this one. It actually comes in two versions, with the hat and then here without. So I like those options. That is pretty cool. Assembly, as you saw, was really, really easy. I think he scaled pretty well. He might be a little bit big. It's difficult to tell when a character's sitting down, and let's be honest, he's a character from a video game, so it makes it even more difficult. So I do plan to put him with all those other Street Fighter pieces. He's gonna be right in the center. If you wanna see what that looks like, Check out the Extreme channel, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I post exclusive content on there. The link is in the description below. One issue I would say I had is the claws are, for Vega are a little bit bent. Here's a picture right here. So not fantastic, but it's on the back where, again, I won't be seeing it. So design-wise, that's really the only flaw. So I think it's a strong four out of five on the design. I think the other big negative why I didn't give a five, it's just so big compared to the other characters. Although you kind of want that because he's such a focal character. But let's look at the paint and sculpt as a spoiler, it's fantastic. Now let's start with his portraits really quick. Not gonna focus too much on this one because I have that in a combination of other portraits. So this is the exact same portrait, but it has the mask on. I think they did an excellent job. I like the skin tone, it's very, uh, characteristic of the video game. It has this video game type feel, and you see that with the hair on this one as well. Uh, it doesn't need to be too sculpted. This is how I'd expect his hair to look like. I love the strands in the front. And the veins they painted in really just show him like pulsating power. I like that. I think it's a good mix, mix with the flesh tones. Teeth look really nice. All the eyes are, are whited out as they are in the video game, so I think that's cool. And again, a lot of the same characteristics on each portrait. Here's the one where he's grimacing a little bit. I think uh, the gap between the teeth is a smallish, or the teeth. I just call them tooths. The tooths, the teeth. Um, you also see a little bit of uh, pink highlight in the eyes to make them look more evil. And I noticed it's different on each one. Um, so I don't think that's intentional, though. I think that's just uh, due to the painter. The helmet or the hat looks fantastic actually looks like real material. You can see that in the, both the sculpt and then the shine on the paint. Look how clean that paint is with the symbol there. So incredibly well done. And then of course the last one, the really grumpy face, but I love that detail of the sculpt in it. Just all those different uh, variations in his face. Now on the bottom here, they had to figure out something to sit the, the platform on so don't, or the thrown on it has some rivets and it's kind of this mix of colors not something you're really going to spend a lot of time looking at and then the gold or copper tone they use so it's almost like a dome like a ball or a world and I kind of like that and then out rising out of that are his three bosses so Balrog here and it's showing up more on camera here but it almost looks like a mix of silver I don't see that when I'm looking directly on it. It's not as apparent, but I love the musculature on these guys. There's a classic scar for uh, Sagat or Sagat, however you want to pronounce it. Skulls all over the place as well with uh, white teeth or kind of a golden chrome porcelain teeth. So I like that, that difference. Then Vega, and then you see flames on the back. Again, the, the silver that's showing up here isn't showing in real life. So that's kind of interesting. And again, the M. Bison symbol coming out of the sides and that blue aqua gray color, I really like. I like how the, uh, the gold trim around this and then it's cracked, pretty neat. And then the robotic coils or, or whatever I was talking about there, they look good as well. Nice silver shine to them, not too shiny, but not too dull. 
You can see the individual segments in them. Looks really good. But Bison is what you're here for, and they did steal it. Uh, he does steal the show. You know, at the front here, very clean black boots, and then these huge shin guards. He always wore a few uh, uh, markings of battle damage. His costume looks phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I love the way that the clothing falls, almost looks like it's real clothing instead of sculpt. And you can still see his muscular musculature behind it. Look at that huge bicep. And then different shading in different areas really just bring it out. And look how clean the paint is with the, like, the black trim on his jacket. His belt. Now this cape here is really amazing. So this is fully sculpted right here with the skulls. Uh, the cape, the way it flows, again, it looks like fabric and just kind of a cool shine to it on top of the texturized uh, uh, surface that it has. I love how it falls like that. So many cool things on this, really incredible. Paint job's fantastic. The sculpt is pretty fantastic as well. Really impressed. Starting with the paint, like, I, I love what they did. That copper looks great. I'm glad it wasn't gold. I have to give the paint a five out of five. It was so clean. I think they did really good. Again, a few minor tweaks here and there could have been better, but wow. And Sculpt equally as good. This is the first Street Fighter piece from this line, but I think they're going to do more, and I really hope they do because I will probably buy every single one. They look absolutely amazing because this Sculpt is also a five out of five. Now this bad boy was not cheap. As you can tell, a lot went into it. It's so heavy, you know, it's not hollow or anything like that. But he was $1,400 before the $450 shipping price tag, a little bit less than 450. But you're over $1,800 in for a one fourth scale piece. Now granted, this is bigger than most one third scale pieces, but that is a lot of money. Thankfully, very rare, and it's done fantastic. They only made 60 of these, so I think that's incredible. And it just has some great options. So I think this is going to be highly sought after despite Street Fighter statues not having that big of an audience, to be honest with you. So I think the value is probably a three out of five. I think you get your money back. Me shipping this somewhere would be another couple hundred. So it's about $2,000. I think I could get that, but not more money. Maybe I could. I don't know. I just, I know that the audience for Street Fighter stuff is not as big as like Marvel or DC. Now, does this have the X Factor? This guy did not disappoint. He had every expectation. Definitely going to be the centerpiece. And I've talked about this for a long time. He is the reason I kept my Street Fighter collection. And I'm so glad I did. Although I could just say I want to put him with my throne statues. He'd work really well there too. So I still have that option one day. But he's a 5 out of 5. Definitely has the X Factor. I'm not disappointed at all. So if you've ever played Street Fighter 2, I want you guys to throw down below in the comments today so you can try and win a statue. Who is your favorite character to play as? And not only who was your favorite character to play as, who did you hate playing against? What was always one of the toughest ones? We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Thanks guys for, thanks guys for celebrating this moment with me. It is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Let me know what you think and who your favorite Street Fighter person was in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button. Cost you nothing. Really easy to do. Helps the channel a ton. Watch some of these other videos. I'll talk to you soon.